Now here, Ron Christie, a Republican who worked for the Bush administration and for John Kasich too. And Mike Zinn, who was a spokesman for President Obama. It's lovely to have you both here. You. Thanks for having us. And Ron, those pictures of Donald Trump made him look and sound like a totally different candidate, a totally different man to the one we've seen on the campaign trail. I couldn't work out if that was fear, reality's now hitting him, <laughs> or whether the whole thing was a bit of an act and he's not going to govern in the way he talked at all. Emily, I can tell you, once you walk into the Oval Office for the first time, you're, you're struck by the power of it, you're struck by the grandeur of it, and I think perhaps for the first time, Donald Trump looked today and said, my goodness, not only am I president-elect, but I'm going to be in this room for the next four or eight years, and I need to pick up my game, I need to learn how to govern, I need to bring the country together, and today I think he got his first test of, this is what you're going to be confronting. He's never governed. Has he got credible people around him that will help him find the path to do so? What's his covenant going to look like? It ought to be very interesting. There's a lot of talk about Rudy Giuliani, the former mayor of New York City, uh, becoming his attorney general. Uh, there's talk about Dr. Ben Carson, who is also a candidate being the secretary of education. But we're looking to see who are going to fill out those key positions. Who might be the secretary of state? Who's going to be the secretary of defense? And most importantly, who's going to be the White House chief of staff? Of all the picks, the White House chief of staff is the most powerful and the most important one because they deal with feuds in the cabinet and the president's cabinet. And does he have the right caliber of people to go to? Honestly, I don't know. There are a lot of people... Don't know or don't think so? Both. Um, I can tell you, for having worked in the White House for four years for President Bush, there are a lot of people in Washington who are Republicans who are very standoffish with this incoming administration, want nothing to do with Donald Trump, want nothing to do with his policies. And the question remains, can he find people who are seasoned, who are veterans, who understand how to wield the levers of power, who can work with Donald Trump? And I think at this point, you, the answer, I still don't know. Are you coming around? I mean, no. you never. I, I couldn't do that. I, couldn't, I could not work for this president, for this administration. I think he will be working very efficiently and effectively with the Congress, but for my own personal integrity, for having worked with two gentlemen, Bush and Kasich, I don't have an enemy to do it. But the problem is Republicans have to decide now whether they step up to the plate. They say, this is what we've got. And he needs senior, strong voices and, and governments around him to help make it work, or do they see their role as one of keeping him in balance? I mean well, Emily, I think it has to work, right? I mean, this is the most powerful job. In I mean, if the... he fails in this job, it will also be, in part, the problem and the result of the Republican Party not rallying around, right? Um, let me ask you this. Well, let me answer it this way. If I'm asked for my advice, of course I would give it. I mean, given the, the experience that I had for working for a president and a vice president and a governor, of course I would offer them counsel. But do I have it in me to go inside the gates of those 18 acres of the White House behind me? Not at this point. John Kasich was originally approached. You worked closely with him. He was approached for the vice presidency. He was. He said no. Tell he said us. no. Well, John Kasich comes from this from the same viewpoint and standpoint that I do. It's, do you believe that this person is fit to be president of the United States? Do you believe this person has the intellectual capacity and the, and the curiosity to be president? And Kasich didn't feel that way. And I feel the same way. Now, is he a brilliant man? Yes, he's a brilliant man. He's a billionaire. He's a very successful businessman. The question remains, can he parlay those skill sets into governing when he's never done it before? Will he be able to fill the office, or should he fill the office, with the private sector? We've heard all this talk of oil and gas executives, maybe banking uh, execs like Jamie Dimon. Is that mm -hmm. the way this cabinet's going to go? It's going to look like a board. Sure. I mean, when we first came in the Bush administration, we took someone from Wall Street, John So. Uh, to become our first Treasury Secretary. I think it's a smart move. It would calm the markets on Wall Street. They'd say it's one of our own. He knows what he's doing, knows what he's talking about. I've heard the rumor about Jamie Dimon as well from Goldman Sachs, and my understanding is he said he's not interested. Mike Zinn, I couldn't get over those pictures of President Obama's mm -hmm. face today. And mm -hmm. he said all the right things, mm -hmm. and he had the language, but mm -hmm. he looked shattered by mm -hmm. what he was having to do. Yeah, it was obviously a very frank conversation about what faces them now. I think right now you have basically things in two buckets. You have the transition where everyone, all Americans, want things to go well. And then you have the emergence of a loyal opposition starting to see what he's going to do. I mean, Donald Trump on the campaign trail and now as 
president-elect has had no problem reversing course in a matter of seconds on major policy decisions. So it's really an unknown of how he's actually going to govern. And I think he needs to start making that case and start telling the American people in the world how he's actually going to govern. But in terms of the mechanics of transition, mm -hmm. what actually goes on now? I mean, everything that would happen when you start a new job or you have one of the largest companies in, in the world and you have uh, most of the middle managers and managers switch in overnight. So everything from finding your computer and getting your car parked to t working on Obamacare and affordable care and uh, health care for eight years and implementing it to the next day trying to dismantle it. So you're doing everything from changing the policies to trying to figure out how to actually get into your office. Do you think Democrats will come on board? I mean, what I'm trying to work out is do those who have, have bad mouthed Trump and mm -hmm. hate Trump still feel a patriotism comes first? Everyone jokes about Donald Trump being more of a Democrat at heart than a Republican. So if he called on them, would they serve in the I think people will want to look for ways to work with the administration. One thing that there's a lot of talk on the Hill about right now is an infrastructure bill. There, there is the possibility of, of moving something that Democrats have wanted to move, congressional Republicans have not. Trump wants to invest in infrastructure, there might be an opportunity to, to pass something big and meaningful in the first 100 days. Could that change Donald Trump's disposition to working with Democrats? It could. I mean, uh, uh, you want to be hopeful, but right now when he hasn't made any cabinet picks, he hasn't announced his chief of staff yet. Uh, what, what do you think he's going to repeal? I mean, I talked about uh, Obama must just look now at his legacy and see it all being about to be wiped out, whether it's Obamacare, whether it's the Iran deal, the Cuba deal. Immigration. Immigration. So what, what, is, what do you think Donald Trump will, will do first? I mean, do you think, what, what should he do first? Well, today he said he was very, to your point, he yeah. said he was very interested in trying to figure out a way to work with Congress on infrastructure. I think there's bipartisan consensus on that. If Donald Trump comes out in the first 100 days... Infrastructure being the wall. No, 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 infrastructure meaning roads and bridges and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But if he finds a way to do criminal justice reform, that's something that Republicans and Democrats have agreed on. Mm -hmm. If he does those sorts of things in the first 100 days, I think the media and the Democrats will warm up to him and say, okay, he's and a little bit more reasonable. Does Obama throw his hands up now and say, there's nothing I can do to protect what I've done? Or are there checks and balances that well, he can put in place to keep the stuff that he wants to hold well, on to? Well, I think he'll, in the, in the coming days, they'll try to finalize regulations that they've been working on. Uh, things don't happen overnight, despite what Trump may think. Uh, they're big decisions on the Affordable Care Act. 20 million people have health care that didn't have health care eight years ago. How you, even under best case scenario, how you wind that down with the best of intentions could be cataclysmic for the economy and for 20 million people. So there's a lot of work to do and how, how they do that. It doesn't go away on its own. Thank you both very much. Thanks, Thanks for Thank coming you. in.